bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free Welcome to a new episode of A Priest Crafts. My name is Rebecca, and you can find me um, on osbornfiber.com or... Um, <laughs> it's been a really long time since we've chatted here. Um, obviously, this baby was a lot smaller last time you saw me. And um, yeah, she's over a year old now. I guess in the last year, a, a lot has happened. We've moved. We live in Rankin Inlet now. And um, yeah, we moved up two months ago. Um, so I kind of thought, as we as we moved into our new house, I you know we don't have a lot of our stuff yet. Moving in the Arctic is it's a bit of a thing. We actually move most of our belongings by ship. We put everything into a shipping container, and a boat picked it up. Um, but as happened some years there was a bunch of ice in the bay and so our stuff has been delayed by almost two months so we've been fine we've been making do it's not been too it's not been hard or anything but um i've been a little bored i don't have my spinning wheels i don't have most of my yarn i have plenty to do but um when i got to our new house uh, which i'm super super thankful to get to live in i found myself looking around thinking i have no throw pillows I need to make some new curtains. We need like placemats. I need to weave. It was crazy. It was like suddenly I had never had, um, I'd never had the weaving urge before, but all of a sudden I was like, ah, I need to do this. So, no, no, grab. Bah, kiss you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so after hemming and hawing for a long time, I bought a loom. Our first season was really about spinning and about me recording my learning process with spinning. And um, so I thought, um, I, as I'm embarking on a new adventure with weaving, that I could record some of that learning process. You are touching that. Come here. I thought that for season two, we could, um, I would like to take you along with me on my learning process as I start weaving and I'm starting pretty much from nothing um, I know very little except what I've been reading in books as I waited for my loom to arrive and um, yeah so what I like to do the, the, is take you from start to finish with one whole project so I'm gonna show you a little bit of putting my loom together and starting 
you know, figuring that out and and yeah, then I'm gonna dive right into my first project, just a plain weave project. So here we go. So for my first weave, I'm just gonna knit, you know, a straight piece of fabric and I have some ideas for what I'd like it to become, but I have to see if I can make fabric first and what it looks like. I'm gonna use these two yarns, which are just yarns I happen to have lying around. This is a um, Malabrigo Rios. It's a super wash wool and it's beautiful purple. My mom bought it for me when we were in California this summer. And this one is a hand spun. Uh, it started out as a singles, um, but I wanted it to be thicker to be able to work well with this, so I two plied it. It's mm -hmm. mostly merino. Um, and it's got just these lovely colors, so it's going to be a little bit um, weft faced, meaning the, the weft, the across part is going to show up a little bit more than the warp, which is the up and down part. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ball these up so I can make a warp. Here we are a few days later and we have made cloth. Da 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 da! No, don't touch. So, 
So um, I ran out of uh, weft before it was, I saw lots of warp left and I wanted the piece to be a little longer so I added um, a different color of some leftover hand spun that I already had that is in the hat that Diana is wearing right here. Yeah, you can have it. Um, and I thought it went, I thought it went fine. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I wet finished it in very hot water and um, it filled in nicely. Like it, when I, it was interesting because when it was wet, I could still see through it and I expected it to bloom more while it was wet. But as it dried, I had it hanging up in front of a, an, on a curtain rod in front of a window and I could see the holes getting smaller and smaller. That was really interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I've got super wonky salvages, which is super awesome. And I learned a lot. I learned that, um, hem stitching is not an, like, optional. <laughs> I managed to rescue my last few picks, but, um, I almost didn't. Hi, you gonna come sit with me? Ah, awesome. Awesome. You sitting with me. Um, I learned that I, right now at least, I prefer bubbling the weft as opposed to angling it. I'm more comfortable with that and I seem to be, get, be getting better results with that right now. Um, so I had this whole plan for cutting the, this fabric up and making something out of it, but the shrinkage, it, it shrank more than I expected. It shrank down from nine inches in the bloom to about seven and a half. Um, it varied between seven and a half and eight because you know my my weaving was all over the place and that's fine I actually really like it as a scarf it's I I wasn't sure that I would like woven scarves because I'm so used to knitted fabric I've just had knitted scarves for ever and really I, I mostly use cowls but um this goes really well with the hat that she just ran off of where did you where did you, where'd you put the hat baby she actually put it away so it's actually super cute with the new hat. You want to? Yeah, you want to wear your boots? You want to go out? So I might just leave it like that. I I made a mistake in cutting off the cutting off. I should have untied the knots or something because when I just cut it off next to the knots, there was not enough. So I haven't quite decided how I'm going to finish the fringe, but. Uh, I think it's really nice as a scarf, so maybe we'll just do that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> weaving this was just super fun, and I have been waiting what feels like so long to do this because I started the process of um, deciding that I wanted this loom. It's a Lamacra Susanna, uh, 27 inches wide with a stand. Um, came up used for a really good deal on a Ravelry group and it was in Canada in a place where somebody could bring it back for me uh, on a plane instead of paying for shipping because shipping would have been like $150. Um, so I had to kind of hold out for it for the timing so I've been waiting for it for over a month and so when it came I was just like so excited. I was like a kid in a candy store. I was like I can't believe I get to weave. Um, I've been so excited that I've almost felt a little guilty. Like, is it okay for me to be this happy about something like this? Like, should I, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I tried to say, no, that's silly. Don't feel like that. But there's no repressing feelings like that for me. If I feel kind of bad about something, I got to acknowledge it and accept that that's how I feel. Like, otherwise it's just going to be lingering in the background. Um, so I prayed about it, and my thought was just like, you know what? God has given this to you as a gift. This loom came as a really great deal, and it just so happened that there was somebody going to Ottawa at the right time, that I met at the right time, and could bring it back to me for free. He didn't even have to pay baggage handling. Um, and it was in my price range, and I had the money ready to go, that I was saving it for something else, and I decided that I could use the money for that. And... Um, yeah and it just when things just work out like that 
I, I'm not like, oh, thank the universe. I'm like, no, thank God that he cares about the little things like that. And, you know, it's not like I'm neglecting my family. Like, I'm, I'm you know, doing what I need to, doing the things I need to do. I think I need to just accept that this is something that God has given to me as a gift and use it to give thanks to him and glorify him and, and let him delight in in my ability to create. He made me with the desire to make things. You know, as part of being made in his image is that I love to make things. And, you know, we all love to create because we were created by the creator who made us like him, right? So I think I just need to accept that he delights in that. Like, he loves watching me make things, just like I love watching my kids make things. And, you know, that just makes me, knowing that he feels like that about my making, makes me more able to uh, be thankful for what I'm making and to share that joy, to be like, okay, how can I use this to spend time with my kids or to teach the neighborhoods who come, the neighborhood kids who come over, teach them how to do something that they really enjoy, um, you know, to share that joy. So that was, that's my reflection for today is just um, that I'm really thankful to have this opportunity to learn something new and to and to also to delight in the learning process like I've spent this whole month just reading about weaving and you know doing a little bit of weaving on a tapestry loom just to kind of scratch the itch and learn a little bit and you know reading so much about the troubleshooting that people have to do that when I started getting like bubbly salvages and stuff I was like yes I get to have this part of the experience. I have wonky salvages, you know? Um, just that even though it's wrong and it's a mistake, like I'm just so happy to be participating in this journey that so many others have participated in that I'm actually kind of enjoying the mistakes because it's just part of the journey. And I wonder if I could have that attitude about other areas of my life where I'm very much on a learning journey and you know we're we're for the first time we are in a in a in a church where my husband is the main pastor and I'm I'm helping him out um I'm mostly staying home with the kids but that's a new journey that's a new position to be in to to really have all the responsibility to to be on us and it would be really easy to be crushed by that and to, to just be overwhelmed. Um, and there are days that we struggle with that, with just being like, uh, I don't know what to do. But just accepting that, you know what? So many pastors before us have been in this position, have been young pastors without, you know, with a bishop to support them, but it's, it's on you when you're in that place. So many people before us have, have done this and you know what if we got it all right the first time no one would believe that it was our first time like we're going to make mistakes and that's part of the journey it's part of the learning journey and you know just to even delight delight in the fact that we get to be here and make these mistakes um i hope that makes sense Anyway, I am so thankful that you are tuning back in with me after this long hiatus. I'm really happy to be recording again and trying some new things to get some videos out there because um, I have been super thankful for the podcasters I've gotten to watch. And um, so for me, it's just fun to get to participate in sharing with you in this format. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that however you are making that you are having fun with it, that you are, <laughs> I better go. Have an awesome day. Bye. Like a bird on a tree, I'm just sitting here. 